everybody, welcome to this week's lesson here on the beauty of pastel. My name is Bethany and today I am painting a very limited palette piece with some soft trees and some really gentle water. In an earlier video, I shared about how I took my palette and really arranged it to prepare to paint for today and also how I took this photo reference into Photoshop to help me edit a better composition. So check that out. The link is in the description for the first part of this video. This video that you're about to watch is the full painting lesson. I hope you enjoy it. Here is the pencil sketch. You can see the reference photo there on the left and how I arranged this, that distant horizon line. I also wanted to add a little spit of land right there because I wanted to contain that main horizon line so it wouldn't swoop out of the piece. Adding a little, it's almost a framing technique really thinking about the brush strokes uh, or the pencil strokes holding it at the bottom and I, I like to flick and push up to indicate those those branches now this reference photo it has that really large tree on the left that is bare and i that's what i was talking about in the the video about the reference photo is the calligraphy of the piece and making more of a gentle a gentle wave to these bare branches that's an easy way to indicate bare branches in winter, but without having to draw so many of those really hard lines. Okay, so here is another um, just demonstration about the, the calligraphy that I'm talking about. You can see how much I softened the look of the distant trees, and I added that little swoop up upwards angle on that edge right there because I, I didn't want the viewer to be looking at that tree line and then go right out of the piece. I also wanted to contain the reflection to more of the, this third of the composition, and then there's a smiley face for you. Okay, now I'm starting to apply more of just the soft layers of pastel. I've added a few little branches with a brown pencil to reinforce those tree trunks and adding these these pretty neutral tones. I want this to this piece to be wintry, but I also I wanted to add color to this reference. Whenever I desaturated the reference really the only color that it took out was the blue sky and the reflection in the water because the trees were the trees were bare this was april in massachusetts and so it i think it had just snowed i was visiting some family and there there isn't much color in the landscape up there whenever it's on the edge of spring and so i wanted to kind of indicate that through adding some color bringing some color into this into this scene I'm gonna really focus on the water in the beginning stages of this piece, really for the majority, because it is it is the most dominant. It's, it, it takes up the most space in the, in the composition. And um, I love to lay, deeply layer these, these waters. And I think in my water and grass video from a couple weeks ago, I mentioned the fact that I'm really wanting to make more direct marks with my water. Uh, that's just a personal quest of mine to, to avoid blending. I do like to blend in the early stages just because I'm really trying to cover the, the, col the, the color of this paper. And you can just see I'm generally putting in those vertical marks and horizontal marks. So there's usually more of a vertical shadow from trees and then the water itself is horizontal. So you kind of have to add both of those types of marks to create a water effect and I like to do that through layering. I layer colors, I obviously I'm layering values as well, thinking of what is reflected, where where do I want the 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 most dominant area to be, especially in the brightest spot of the water, and that's in that area where um, that's where I want the brightest to be. So I I'm just slowly building up my values or building up my layers. I like to have a darker foreground, very bottom of the piece. I like the water down there to be a little darker than maybe 
then uh, my references explain. It's just, it's kind of a slow process. I tell my classes all the time, water is ugly before it's pretty. So you just have to really kind of go slow. Here I'm using a piece of pipe foam from my garage <laughs> to blend down and across just to soften. We're just working slowly to soften these colors together. And then I'm gonna just kind of work back and forth. So this right here, is how I work on shadows and trees and remember that that trees it's it's a it's a mirrored reflection it's and so when we're putting in uh, like a, a tree trunk for instance it needs to be at the proper angle you don't want to put it at an angle that is that isn't as nature would would re reflect so really pay close attention to that I don't usually worry too much about including the entire if it, there's a bare tree I don't include a very hard edged shadow in, into the water. I kind of like to make those disappear a little bit because they can draw the eye a little bit too much. Be careful on that. Really look at your, your, your tree trunk shadows and have them taper off, taper off a little bit. Have the angle correct and then taper them off and then, and then it's just a little bit easier. Adding some darks in just to further that contrast, sweeping it down. Remember what goes us what goes up must come down. Just gently kind of tapping it with my finger every now and then. Wanting some contrast right there where that little distant this distant tree line. In this in this photograph, obviously all of the trees look like they're on the same plane because they're all the same color. And so this is where as artists, we get to play with the exaggeration of value to, to indicate distance. And so that little peach tree that's kind of in the distance behind the more, the darker purples in the front, that's just my way of pushing those trees back while keeping, while keeping the composition intact. I'm going to further refine that lower section of the water where I, I haven't put any pastel yet. This is a darker valued gray blue. I like to pull from the gray section of my pastel palette first. If I look over and I need a color, I look at that section first and that helps me avoid the traps of the saturated colors. Now what I'm going to demonstrate right here is something called simultaneous contrast. What you see is how one pastel can be either light or dark depending on what it's next to. In the darker shadow area of that tree shape, that, um, that pastel was lighter. In, but when you drag it across into the lighter area, it is darker. Simultaneous contrast is a really great tool to have in your knowledge base. It doesn't only apply to value shifts, it can also apply to color shifts. For example, a, a cool color, you can't really tell if it's cool until it's next to something warmer. When we place those different elements around our painting, really thinking about that concept, it can really help our, our paintings progress. And also it's it's a really useful tool for pastelists and, and of course other painters as well but we have our immediate palette just right in front of us we don't have to mix paint and go through that effort and so we have our palettes right there where we can really pick and choose very carefully using the, the concepts of simultaneous contrast I have continued to define that lower area of the water and now I'm using my Viva paper towel to just tap, 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 tap and blend in, especially the hard edges of where the values are, are changing from the dark shadows to towards the light. Um, I'm really wanting to contain that light in that area right over there on the on that third line if there was an imaginary line going down the painting and so I've I've worked kind of outside in towards that light and in the reference photo there is there are brighter lights over there where I'm working right now because the trees are lower but I don't want to put really bright spots over there because it would draw the eye away from my main focal point which is the that distant light that where the the tree branch goes across that first shadow form and then where it is against that uh, desaturated peach colored trees in the background that's kind of like there's a kind of a circle there going on of uh, focal point so that's where I really want people to look so I'm going to lessen the impact of the other areas of reflection. 
want to keep adding those horizontal reflection, just the plane of the water. Water has always going to be level. Even with, in the reference photo, there's ripples that are kind of at an angle, but I'm not, I, I chose not to paint those today because I really just wanted there to be a softer water form. But even if the water is rippled, on the edges where it meets the land or where it's flowing, it's always going to be, it's always going to be level. Water finds level always. And so really be careful of, especially if you have a flat distant horizon line to make your water, don't angle it up because then water wouldn't do that. It, um, it doesn't, it doesn't flow upwards. So really be careful about your, the lines of your water. Obviously here, just starting to bring in some color to this underbrush area using that paper towel. The paper towel is almost like a looser form of the pipe foam. Viva are great because they don't, they pick up the pastel. They don't just whisk it into the air and they grab it. And so it's a little cleaner than if you were to use a regular paper towel. But I just, I like to kind of dab it on. It creates fun texture. Now just adding some more color to these, to the water. One way that I really like to add a luminescent quality to the water is through choosing analogous colors that are really close to each other in value, but are different hues. In, in other words, in a blue water, I'm gonna add some, some of the same tones of green and also purple, because those are all next to each other on the color wheel and that will really bring some life and um, just beauty to your water. Adding a little bit of sky up there, although it's not much different than the uh, oatmeal color of the, of the paper. And you know, some people might say, but the, your, your water is blue and your sky isn't blue. Like what's up with that? Well, I'm an artist, I can do whatever I want. I can have a cream colored sky with, with blue shadows because I like the color, because it's pretty. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Um, not everything has to be completely realistic. Some people are like, nope, nope, I wouldn't do that. That's against the rules. And I, and I just say, I can make it look however I want. So have freedom to, to do it however you want as well. I'm adding some little blue into the trees right here, mainly because I kind of wanted to bring in a little different hues to these tree line, to this tree line. And also, so the water, the blue of the water isn't represented somewhere else in the painting. I, I will, like right here, I, I brought the blue in and then I'm gonna kind of soften the effect of that color by layering on the gray purple that I had, that I put the blue on top of. So I'm kind of taking one step forward, two steps back, or two steps forward, one step back. It's, it's a constant evaluation back and forth and back and forth. And that's what is so helpful about the sanded paper that we have, because we can layer, we can continue to layer just to create so much depth and richness to our paintings. Now what I'm going to show you is um, a little bit of a technique that if you have an area that you really want to increase some contrast, use workable fixative. You can see that I sprayed that on, especially in the tree line, and then I also kind of made a uh, vignette. I, I sprayed it around the edges of the piece in the corners to further darken those values slightly so the eye would be further trained inwards towards those lighter colors. Make sure if you use workable fixative, make sure it's for pastel and do not do it um, in a room that is not well ventilated. I have a window open in my studio right when I did that, right by the window. And then usually after I spray it, if I am spraying it by the window, I will leave the room until the, the air dissipates. Or I will take it outside or to my garage and spray it because that stuff smells terrible. It's not good to breathe. It's like spray paint. It really does help with the process if, if, you've, if you want just a little bit more drama, a little bit more contrast, add a squirt of, or a, a spritz of a workable fixative. Test it before you try because it could get clogged and spit out some blobs. And like I said, once again, use safety precautions with it because it is a dangerous to breathe. So make sure it's by a window, clear the room until you cannot smell it anymore. And then you can, or you can wear a mask in your studio. But I, I just, I spray it and leave the room uh, with the window open. Often as pastelists, I'm sure that you have gotten questions about, well, do you use fixative, especially final fixative? I don't use final fixative 
because you can see how how much it alters the colors and alters the hues especially in more transparent or translucent areas those lighter those lighter areas that we want um, it can really sink those colors in and so i only use workable fixative sometimes uh, in this instance where i wanted a little darker tree line but i don't i don't use it in every painting it just kind of depends on the piece um, but i never use it at the end of a painting or a final fixative I'm wanting to sharpen up the edge of the bank right there where this where this uh, river is and add some darker tree trunks in there, weaving them in and out, using a new pastel to just gesturally flick up and draw those lines. I'm, I'm not, I, I always, whenever I paint a tree, I always start at the base of the tree and work upwards. I never go from the top, tip toppy branches down. Obviously the trunk of a tree is thicker than the um, branch edges. Make sure you're working from, from the, especially on a bare tree, if you're drawing trunks, bottom to the top. I'm really starting to kind of focus in, step back a lot, looking at the shapes of the values that I have, the shapes of the trees. Right now, just bringing, that's um, a new pastel that I'm using, and I'm really using it to glaze the color. Not, um, I'm not really trying to make the, that's a really light pink. I'm, I'm, I'm using the new pastel almost as a blending tool. They are so hard that they can uh, take place of the pipe foam while adding just a hint of color to your painting. Water is a flat plane, once again, so we must go down and then we have to go across. Deepening the shadows a little bit um, under that tree, stepping back, taking my ta paper towel out, and dab, dab, dab. Wanting to just define those trees on the edge, show some reflections. And also I like to add a pretty dark edge um, where the riverbank meets the water because it would be cut out. You know, there's erosion happening with that and it just adds just such contrast and sparkle. Going to add some peach, some lighter saturated peach to that distant tree line against that tree trunk, just to add some additional impact of contrast, those lighter tones against darker tones. Also some oranges blending those in, just kind of making a few little tree holes, making there um, just some air in, in, in this brush, these brushy trees on the edge of this pretty, pretty river. Now in these final marks on this painting, I um, have really just been thinking that uh, I want to add a little bit more interest to, the, the, to this tree line. And so I'm going to layer in quite a few hues and colors, values, to just create a little bit more texture and depth. Um, right now it just it seems kind of solid. But sometimes, some of that is because I spray that workable fixative. Workable fixative does allow you to keep continue layering, but I wanted, I felt like these trees, they just kind of seemed a little claustrophobic. I like um, there to be air without adding too many tree holes or sky holes I mean and in this case it's they're not really sky holes it's more creating depth within the branches so I'm using really close values of different colors um, in that gray section once again to imitate foliage that's branching over using a little bit warmer um, that's a little bit warmer um, kind of a maroon burgundy I think that's a unison just to be in contrast with the cooler purple that I used as my base and that's another re that's another example of simultaneous contrast right there how some things look warmer or cooler depending on what they're next to adding those those uh, brighter tones just to increase the contrast of, of saturations and beauty to this piece sweeping that down into the water a little bit because that would be glowing as well and it just adds such a beautiful touch. Uh, I, hope, I hope you've enjoyed watching this piece come together. I certainly had fun painting it for you and talking about some of the different concepts about how to how to use your reference photos, how to edit them. I hope you enjoyed watching that painting come alive. I certainly love painting them for you. Thank you 
you so much for being here and for watching this. If you like to help support this channel, keep these free videos coming, please consider visiting my Patreon page. The link is right here. I have several levels of support and I appreciate every single one of you. I can't wait to keep teaching you about the beauty of pastel. See you later.